Uh, it would be great to be living in the sweet by and by tonight, but unfortunately we are stuck here in the nasty now and now. What is that somebody said? To, to live above with saints that we love, oh, that will be glory. But to live below with saints we know, now that's a different story. <laughs> Yeah, it won't be too hard to live above with the saints we love, but living below right now with the ones we know with all of our warts and our problems and faults and failures, uh, that's a different story. The Lord will straighten all that out one day, amen. Acts chapter number 20, we find in our text, the apostle Paul is giving one of the greatest exhortations to a group of people that I guess any preacher has ever given to anyone. He's exhorting the elders of the church at Ephesus to continue in the faith that he had delivered to them, started this church, founded this church on the Word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can look back at the book of Ephesians and see the things he taught them and trusted them in mighty doctrine, word and deed. And tonight we find that Paul's making his last trip through Ephesus on his way back to Jerusalem, which subsequently will be his last trip there as he'll be locked up for preaching and then make his journey towards Rome and the loss of his life for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now we've been preaching now for about, this makes number nine, so nine different sermons spanning ever how many weeks now on the subject of some things you must do. Our text has been Micah chapter 6 verse number 8 where the Bible said, What doth the Lord require of thee, O man, but to walk humbly and justly with the Lord thy God? You can read that text, Micah 6, 8. We've been talking about what God requires of us. I know we live in a generation that requires everything out of God and then wants a God that requires nothing out of them. But that's just not biblical Christianity. That's not, that's not biblical service toward the Lord. Salvation is God coming after us, but service is us coming after God. And the Lord does require some things out of you and I now that we are saved and we're his children. And Paul's giving these commands, and I'm going to get down to one of these things that we must do. But let's just begin reading in verse number 17, Acts chapter number 20 and verse number 17. Acts 20, 17, the Bible said, in from Miletus... He sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. I like verse 24, but none of these things move me. Uh, just because some people talk bad about him, it didn't move him. Just because trouble came, it didn't move him. Just because he might even lose his life, it didn't move him. We live in a day people are moved so easily. We, we live in a day Christians get moved over the least little bit of thing. It just like just, just rocks their world and moves them. It does good to take one from Paul's playbook. None of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Our text tonight, verse 28, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. And to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. So tonight we'll deal with the subject of 
take heed to yourselves. All of these things we've looked at that the Bible tells us that you must do. Examine yourself. Save yourself. We know that doesn't mean from hell. We dealt with that. Save yourself and encourage yourself and exercise yourself and submit yourselves. Now we find the Apostle Paul tells this church in verse 28 to take heed unto yourselves. And I thought to myself as I was looking at this text, Brother David Hyatt, what is he telling them that they are to take heed to? What is it that he is instructing them, exhorting them, commanding them that they need to be aware of, that they need to make sure that they take heed to in and of themselves? And, and what the only thing I can figure is in verse 28, he said, take heed therefore. In other words, in light of the things I've just said, you need to take heed to those things. And the things that he had said prior to this is the word of God that had been preached and that had been taught and that they had heard tonight. Notice what your Bible said down in verse number 20. In verse 20, we just read it, but he said in verse 20 that he had taught them and showed them publicly and from house to house. He said in verse 20, he kept back nothing that was profitable unto them. Verse 21, he said that he had testified to the Jews and to the Greeks repentance toward God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 25 said that he had preached the kingdom of God to these people. Verse 27, right before our text, he said, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. What is Paul telling them to take heed to? He is reminding them of all the preaching and all the teaching and all the Bible that they have heard heard and that he has instilled into their heart. Now listen to me tonight. Here's the message tonight. We have the same problem, me to you, we have the same problem that the church at Ephesus had. You say, what is our problem many times? Our problem is we hear preaching, but we don't heed preaching. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. I know we live in a day where we talk about in the last days, the Bible said that there would be a, a, a famine in the land, not for food nor for water, but for hearing of the words of God. Uh, can I say we live in, at least in our church, we got plenty of preaching. We're not at a famine of hearing the word of God. We just had a revival. We heard preaching Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Every time you come to the house of God, generally you hear preaching or teaching. We have Sunday school Sunday morning. Then we have have another message Sunday morning, then we have a message Sunday night, then we have a message Thursday night. If you want preaching, you get about three and a half to four hours of it near about every week at Bible Missionary Baptist Church. That ain't counting the messages that I hope you listen to on YouTube or on sermon audio and feeding yourself throughout the week. That's not counting all the Bible that you read and that's not counting all the Bible that you hear sung about. I mean, brother, we are gourd slap full, or we should be, on hearing the preaching and the teaching and the word of God. Can I say our problem is, is not that we don't hear, it's that we don't heed tonight. And here in the text, the apostle Paul said, I'm not just talking about hearing. He said, I want you to take heed to what I have preached and what I have told you. Jesus Christ himself said this in Luke chapter 12 and verse 48. Jesus said, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. Jesus said, in other words, if I give you a whole lot, I'm going to require a whole lot. Can I just pause and say, we all ought to get a little nervous in the service tonight of what all God is going to require of us this evening. You say, what is God going to require of me at the judgment seat of Christ, preacher? He's going to require of you every sermon you've heard delivered from this pulpit. Every word of God you've heard taught from this pulpit. Hey, that's a lot to have to be required of. You say, what's he going to require of of you is going to require of me. Did I preach the word of God to you? And did I live or try and live what I've preached to you tonight? We don't always hit the mark and live up to it. But I'm saying tonight God has given us much and he is going to require much out of us tonight. I was interested in that little phrase, take heed. Take heed, the little phrase, take heed. You know it means to give attention to. It means to apply oneself. It means to attach to yourself, but it carried Brother David Hyatt a word picture with it that as I was studying it, uh, blew me away. It's the word picture of this. It is the picture of, of a boat bringing a ship to dock and tying it off. 
It carries the implication of not just seeing a ship out yonder on the waves, but the ship actually coming into the channel, up the canal, and then being tied off at the dock. It has attached itself. It has been brought home, if you will. It has made port, if you will. Can I say that's what preaching ought to do in our life? I, I think sometimes we just come in and, and you sit out there and we hear preaching and it's, well, it's way out there and yeah, that's a blessing. But I wonder, do you ever bring preaching home with you? I mean, do you ever tie it off in your heart? Do you ever make sure that the Word of God preached? I go to an altar to seal what I've heard to say, God, help me to put this into practice. And God, I'm not just going to go to an altar. I'm going to walk out of here and try and live what I've heard and put it into practice. I don't want to just be a hearer of the Word. I want to be a doer as well tonight. I'm telling you, it's easy to let things get loose. You, you realize any of y'all ever mess with boats and tie them up. You can tie something off at the dock, but if you don't take time with it, if you don't come back along and along, I mean the waves will just keep running around over there and that ropes will start getting loose and it'll start getting kind of untied from the dock. Every once in a while we need to tighten things up in our life. Every once in a while we need to tighten the truth back up in our heart and not let it get loose and not let it get away from us to take heed to these things tonight. That's what Solomon said dealing with his son. Solomon says this three different times in the book of Proverbs. Solomon dealing with his son about applying wisdom. Me and Brother John were just talking about this Sunday and he's dealing with wisdom and Proverbs and such in the teen class on Sunday morning uh, in Sunday school. And you know the difference this morning between understanding and wisdom. You can have understanding without having wisdom this morning. Understanding is just looking at something and I understand it. I recognize it. I have mental assent and mental knowledge to what it is that has been set before me but wisdom is taking your mental ascent and taking that knowledge and then putting it into practice in your life applying it tying it off to your heart bringing it home to you taking heed to it and Solomon said this in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 1 my son forget not my law but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee listen to me verse 3 let not mercy and truth forsake thee Bind them about thy neck. Tie them off. Bring them home. Wrap them around yourself. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. He says this in chapter 6 and verse number 21. Chapter 6 verse 21. He said, My son, keep thy father's commandment. Forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually. Because they slip on us. They get away from us. So bind them continually upon thine heart. And and tie them about thy neck. He says in chapter 7 and verse number 3 about the commandments. He says, bind them upon thine fingers. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Over and over, Solomon is saying the same thing. What's he saying? He's saying, bring this home to you. Tie it off to your heart. Y'all listen to me tonight. Don't just listen to preaching. Don't just read your Bible. Don't just listen to singing. But God, help us to take heed to it tonight. To do more than just have have a mental ascent that we say well I understand it and I even believe it but God help us to get beyond that to where we bring the ship home where we don't just say well that, that ship out there that message out there that's for so and so boy I'm telling you that message up yonder that's for sister so and so but God help us to bring it to ourselves and say it ain't my brother and it ain't my sister but it's me oh Lord standing in the need of prayer and God I'm tying this off to my heart and I'm tying it tied so it doesn't get away from me so that in the morning I remember it when I need it and tomorrow night I remember it when I need it I have bound it to myself I've taken heed to it there are all kind of things in the scripture that we should tie off and take heed to tonight I got a bunch of things to say by way of introduction. We're going to preach our message out of Acts 20, but I got a lot of things to say. The Lord Jesus said this in the Gospels. He said, take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of men. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. He says, hey, take heed that you don't be given so that you can look good about it. He said, Matthew 16, 6, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He said, don't be like the Pharisees. Take heed to this. Matthew 18, 10, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. Don't do wrong toward the children. He said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Talking about taking heed to yourself. 
Matthew 24, 4, he said, take heed that no man deceive you. Talking about things you better bind on your heart. He said, Mark 4, 24, take heed what ye hear. You better be careful what you're listening to. He says in one place, Brother Skip, take heed how you hear. Hear with the right heart. Don't listen to preaching. Don't listen to the word of God with a critical ear. How you hear. With a hateful ear. With a hard ear. Listen to it saying, I need this. Lord, speak to me. But not just how you hear. He said, take heed what you hear. Be careful what you intake. It'll affect you. That's why we preach against the wrong music, Brother Hunter, and the right music. As, as much as this world, I'm getting off sidetrack here, and I don't need to because i got so much more to say. As much as this world wants to act like music is neutral, Brother Randy, and music don't mean nothing, that's a lie. If music is neutral, then how come they ain't playing Amazing Grace at the Blessed Fire Honky Talk? Come, how come at the clubs where they're going to be fornicating and dancing half naked and drinking liquor, how come they don't strike off singing, For the God on the mountains is still God in the valley. Music is neutral. It don't matter if we're singing about God or singing about music is neutral. No, because it carries something with it. Young people, you can't pump in that filth and garbage that Taylor Swift and Miley Cyrus and all these harlots and whoremongers sing about and it not affect you tonight. Don't mess your mind up. That, that, y'all get me all sidetracked. He said, I'm talking about taking heed to yourselves, taking heed. He said in Mark 13, 23, but take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you all things. In other words, he said, I've told you about this. You better take heed to it. He said, take heed, watch and pray. He said in Luke 12, 15, take heed, beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. He said in Luke 17, 3, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. If he repent, forgive him. I mean, these are things that he's saying, tie off to your heart. Bring this home with you. Don't just leave it satin. Bring this to port. Attach it to yourself. Weld it to your heart. Did you notice how over and over Solomon said, bind it and write it. He said, bind it on yourself and then write it on the table of your heart. What's he saying? Weld it and tattoo it to your heart. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to get something that's welded loose. And it's hard to get a tattoo off after you got it. Any of you folk got tattoos before you got saved? Y'all know what I'm talking about? You don't just soap and water them things off. They're attached. That's what he's saying about truth. That's what he's saying about the Word of God, about preaching, teaching. Don't just listen to it. Let God tattoo it to you. Let God weld it to you. Take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourself. There are all kinds of things in the New Testament we're told to take heed of. I, I, this is all introduction. I got a long introduction, short message. We're going to preach our message out of Ephesians or Acts 20. Acts 20. But let me just show you some things real quick, real quick, that we should take heed of. We should take heed of stumbling. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. I want you to look at all these real quick. Hold your place in Acts 20. Put your bookmark there. Put your bookmark in Acts 20. We're coming right back. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we should take heed of stumbling. Now, I'm going to shotgun these real fast because we got to hurry. So, so if, if you're not turning on the fly and quick, just write them down and, and, and hang with us here, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. He's been talking about the people of Israel and how they were murmuring and how they were fornicating and how they were worshiping idols and how they was tempting the Lord and all of this. And he says this in 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth bind this to your heart. Bring it home with you. Take heed lest he fall. What should we take heed of tonight? You ought to take heed that it's possible you could fall. Brother Peanut, it's possible I could fall. It's a high probability and possibility. If these people did it, it's possible for all of us to get messed up and fall too. Take heed of this. 
Don't just let this be some thought that you say, well, that's, yeah, I know we always talk about somebody could fall again. Yeah, it could be you. I ain't been here long, but I've been here seven years, and I'm telling you, in seven years, I've watched people that I never thought would fall fail. And they ain't here tonight. I'm talking about it could be you. Take heed of stumbling. Galatians chapter 5. Take heed of strife. Galatians 5.15. He says this in Galatians 5.15. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. What's he saying? He said you ought to take heed about strife in the church. That's what Galatians 5 is about. It's about the church. He said you ought to take heed about having strife in the church. It's easy to get to the place if you're not careful, if you don't have it constantly brought to port, attached to you, welded to your heart, tattooed to your soul. If you don't have it constantly right there in front of you where you're remembering it, it's easy to start having strife amongst yourselves. See, your first sister to start hating a sister, a brother to start hating a brother, church, young people to start fighting against young people and forgetting what we're really here for. I'm just shotgunning these. We ought to take heed of stumbling, take heed of strife, take heed of our service, take heed to serve. Colossians chapter 4, Colossians 4 and verse number 17, take heed of our service. Colossians 4, 17, Paul said and say to Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. He's talking to a fellow here, Brother Jacob, that he says, hey, you better take heed of that ministry. I've given you something to do. You you better take heed to it. I know this. Let me just speak from personal experience as somebody who's been doing ministry stuff for 22 years or so now. I'm telling you, it's easy for me to lose sight of what the main thing is. For me to start looking at ministry in a different way than what ministry really is, Brother Kevin. And if I don't keep it pulled up tight, if I don't keep it tied off right in front of my face where I can't miss it at the dock of my heart, at the port of my heart, it'll end up slipping away from me and I'll forget, what is is this about? Take heed to your service. Take heed of strife. Take heed of stumbling. Take heed of your standing. Take heed of your standing in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Take heed of your standing. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. He said, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. You say, what's he talking about here? He's talking about standing in the doctrine that we've received. Don't fall away from it. Don't become an apostate where you fall away from what you've heard and believed. Because watch this. If you've got your Bible open in 1 Timothy 4, where I just read verse 16, back up to verse 1. Watch what can happen if you don't take heed to yourself standing in the right doctrine. Watch what can happen in verse 1 of chapter 4 of 1 Timothy. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed... To seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What happened, Brother David Fields? They brought the wrong thing to port. They let the wrong person weld something to them. They let the wrong person attach something to them. Now they have taken heed to the wrong stuff. That's why he said stand in the right stuff. Take heed to our standing. Take heed to our service, our strife. Take heed about slipping. Look at Hebrews chapter 2. We preached a message on this here a while back. A whole lot of slipping going on we preached on here a while back. But Hebrews chapter 2, watch, we ought to take heed to our slipping. Hebrews 2, 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Why? What happens if we don't? They, they get loose. Lest at any time we should let them slip. What we have tied up to ourselves, if we're not careful, it can start slipping. I not speak for none of y'all. I wouldn't dare do none of that. Y'all all just always done just everything right in your Christian life. So I would never speak for none of y'all. But let me just speak for the guy that's preaching to y'all tonight. There have been times in this 20 plus year walk of faith that I'm telling you that Brother Tony James, there's been times that things that I had tightened up real good and doing what I was supposed to do in my life, I, I, I'd, I'd get busy doing this or more preoccupied with that or thought more about that. And all of a sudden I realized, man, I've let some of that slip. I've let my Bible reading slip. 
I've let my prayer life slip. I've let my witnessing slip. I've let my giving slip. I've let my worship slip. I've let my tongue start slipping. I've let my ears start slipping. Yeah. You say, you preacher, me, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Look here. Sometimes coming back home by yourself, Brother Xander, from all these exotic places like I go, like middle Kentucky. <laughs> Mountains of West Virginia, oh, these wild and crazy places. <laughs> wild and wonderful in West Virginia. I mean, you know, trailers up on sides of mountains that you wonder how in God's name ever get them up there. Brother Bill, you start riding down the road for eight hours after a meeting on Wednesday night trying to get home. I'm going to tell you this, it's hard to stay awake sometimes. Sometimes Monster Energy and Red Bull just don't do it. You sit there and start punching them, that XM radio, and you, you're like, praise God, there's some gospel music. And then all of a sudden, they bring on one of them limp-wristed homosexual gospel groups. I was like, I can't listen to that. All right, them dudes. I can't and all of a sudden, you punch on next door, and there's the highway over there. Old Garth starts slipping through. You say, hey, I know that song. I'm going to sing half of that because that'll keep me awake. Then all of a sudden, you're about halfway through, and you think, I can't listen to that trash. Holy Ghost, I said, what are you doing? Slipping? Come on now. I know y'all act like y'all never slip. I'm talking about slipping. I'm talking about these things you better tighten up on because they'll slip on you. Earnest heed to this stuff. Whatever it is you deal with. Here he says we ought to take heed of slipping, take heed of stumbling, take heed of straying. Look at chapter 3 of Hebrews. This is a whole message for a whole other time, y'all. <laughs> Chapter 3, this is a whole message. 312, take heed, brethren, lest there be any, any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Huh? Save people get to straying. Yeah. 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 Ah, you know what? It's just a Thursday night. Ain't no big deal. Well, come on, preacher. Come on now. Just a Thursday night. I mean, you know, I had a big day, and I'm, I'm tired, and I'm just going, it's just Thursday night. Hey, I, I ain't saying they ain't some merit or something. I mean, then it comes, well, it's just Sunday, you know. I mean, you know. I'm telling you, it's easy to start straying. Isn't what the old songwriter said right, Brother Donald, when he wrote this? Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. He knew this principle. Listen to the next line. Here's my heart. Oh, taken. Seal it. Well, this stuff to my heart. Take heed to our straight and take heed to the scriptures. Look at 2 Peter. There's all kind of taking heed stuff. We could do, this is a whole series. I've just thrown this out to you in like 10, 15 minutes, a whole series. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter 1, 19, watch what it said. Take heed to the scriptures. Take heed to the scriptures. 2 Peter 1, 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. Watch this prophecy, this sure word of prophecy he's talking about. It's that book you hold in your hand if you've got a King James Bible in your lap. He says, take heed to it, bind it, weld it, bring it home to you. Why? Because they get loose and they drift away. So having said all that, go back with me to Acts chapter number 20. And very quickly, let me show you just a couple things and we're done. Why does he tell us to take heed to all this stuff? Well, Brother Bill Tyson, what's the point of taking heed to all this stuff? It's a whole lot of stuff. The Lord says, take heed to this. Tighten this stuff up, man. Why? Well, there's reasons for it. Look at what Paul said, the reasons why he told them to take heed. I'm going to throw these things out real quick and we're done. Acts chapter number 20. And he said this in verse number 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Here's the first reason we ought to take heed to ourselves. Verse 29, for I know this. That after my departing shall grievous wolves... Enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Number one, 
Why should we take heed to ourselves and all these things? Because of the wolves. Wolves, y'all. Paul ain't the only one that told the church and warned them about wolves this evening. Brother Joe, we find the Lord Jesus said in Matthew 7, 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Can I just say this? And you ought to be aware of this. And if you're not, I don't know where your head's at. But we live in a day of wolves in sheep's clothing. Brother, I'm t- I, look, you ought to have enough sense to spot the real wolves. I mean, you ought to have enough sense to be able to look at the LGBTQ crowd and look at the transgender crowd and, and look at the abortion crowd and, and look at most of what all the Democrats do. I mean, they not even they not even got no sheep clothing on. They just out in the open wolf. You're, surely you can spot all that. I mean, that ain't even hard to catch a hold of. But I'm telling you what's less easy to catch a hold of, Brother Paul Stierwald, is these things that are sleeping in the churches nowadays and they got sheep's clothing on and they talk sweet and they look sweet and they act sweet. But it's a wolf in the pulpit and it's a wolf in the singing and it's a wolf in the... I'm talking about, Brother, we live in a day of wolves. And here's the danger is we living in a day where the wolf is trying to take on sheep sheep-like attributes to try and deceive the sheep in the day we live. Brother Udi, I'm talking about people like this. I'm talking about people that run a podcast that I just saw the other day. Uh, and, and I'm talking about a fellow, he's an independent Baptist. Was an independent Baptist, Brother John. He runs a podcast called the Church Advance Podcast. I'm talking about a straight up apostate tonight. You say, you ain't worried about him listening? No, he's friends with people I know. I tell him he's an apostate to his face if he walked in. I'm talking about he literally has a podcast where he says this. I'm helping churches transition away from the King James Bible. He said, I'm telling you, if you listen to the, I listened to the whole thing just so I'd be able to hear what the opposition said. I'm telling you, Brother Noah, after 45 minutes of listening to that dude, it was literally like listening to the serpent in Genesis 3, yea, hath God said. Same tactic, same spirit. I mean, he's so nice and smiles and real sweet, contemporary sounding. And the whole time telling you why your King James Bible is garbage, telling you why he don't use the King James Bible no more, telling you that your book's got error and mistakes, telling you that your book ain't worth using no more and why we ought to get rid of it. And literally, literally, he is going into churches and subverting them. He even says, he even literally says, you have to do this like subtle like. Listen to me, anything you got to do underhanded like that, that ain't, that ain't sheep like tactic, that's wolf tactic. That's wolf tactic. There's one, there's one thing about Zorn that you'll never worry about. I'll level with you, race tie right across the plate from the blessed fired pulpit. There'll be no subtle tactics of me trying to slide something in. We'll just tell you how it is, face value. This guy trying to slide in and mess these young fellas up that are coming out of Bible college and messing young men up where they don't even have a Bible, where they turn into apostate, reprobate liberals. I'm telling I have no respect for that. That's wolf mentality. They're slipping in among us. They persuade the sheep. You say, what's your job, preacher? My job is to be a sheepdog and bark at the wolf. Amen, y'all. I'm, I'm worried about this day, Brother Xander, that we are watching wolves slip in with the church. I'm telling y'all, this Bethel, Hillsong, contemporary, Dove Awards crowd, they are wolves. I just, I just watching Brother Keith the other day, this, this, this Dove Award stuff, and they just had the Doves. They in churches and all this, and I don't remember what the guy's name even is. He's some popular guy now that is like the, he's the he's the thing among that crowd, and he's got a big ponytail way off down to here, and nose rings and earrings, and I mean, brother, and he did a little tightly. He just did a, a show the other day where he had leather pants on. I mean, I ain't even talking about like flared ones. I mean like tight ones. It's a, I mean, it's the most sodomite thing I've ever seen in my life. And literally, this is the way they sing it. Now, I'm like, that's, that's 
the world. And they're promoting it to our kids and bringing it in our churches. I'm telling you, that's wolves, y'all. I was reading about wolves. I was reading about, well, don't take heed. You say, oh, I know this stuff, preacher. I know this. You just, we just about one bad pastor in this church from winding up over there. Do you realize every ministry is like one bad preacher in the pulpit away from total apostasy? That's why we try and keep it tight and right, Brother Jack, so that we, don't, we can't just go from one pastor from this one to that one because it would be such a stark contrast. Brother Keith, this is what's worrying me about some of my contemporaries, some of the people in my generation, that the, they are setting the way, they are paving the way for the wolf to take over. Some of these guys, yeah, it still looks a little bit, you know, independent baptist but it's got such a smack of the world on it that it won't take one guy pop in after them and he'll be all the way over there, take their Bible away, take their standards away, change their music, and it'll be way out in the weeds somewhere. I was reading about wolves. You know what they said about these wolves? I just told you where Jesus said inwardly they're ravening wolves. That word, the Bible says this about three or four times about wolves. Wolves are only mentioned like 12 times in your Bible. And the word ravenous means to be hungry or starving. You know what wolves are, Brother Cliff? They're carnivorous. Listen to me. They're flesh eaters. Wolves are flesh eaters. Wolves are all carnivores. That's where we get the word car- carnal, carnality. Wolves are all about the carnal. You can always spot a wolf, whether it be a preacher or a member, anybody. You can always spot a wolf. You say, why? Because what we're doing tonight, it don't satisfy them. Preaching, preaching and worship and singing and fellowship like that, this just don't do it for them. We got to have, we got to have some flesh. Flesh it up. Flesh it up. Let me feel something on that. Yeah, they're carnivores. They got to have more than that. I say this, they're not just carnivores. They, they said this, they're not just ravenous. They hunger, they starve. Got to have more flesh. They like the dark. Talking about because of the wolves is why we got to take heed to this stuff. They say, that, I was reading in my Bible, four times out of like the 12 times that wolves are mentioned, four times, wolves are associated with the evening and the night. Three times, Brother Keith, it calls them the, the wolves of the evening. The first time you find wolves mentioned is talking about Benjamin, and it talks about he devours the spoil at night. Isn't that what the Bible said, that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil? Wolves like it dark. Let's turn the lights off. You know, let's darken it out. Let's dim it all down in the church. Me and Brother Mark was talking the other day. We talking about trying to figure out how we can make it brighter in here. <laughs> you say, ain't it bright enough? I don't know. Looking back through there, sometimes it looks kind of dim back here. It's real bright up here. We got a pile of lights. But I, I'm, I'm talking about throwing some more Mac Daddies out there so y'all can see real good and I can see y'all real good. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about I like it bright. There, there don't be nothing wrong with that. I start getting nervous at these places, start painting their ceilings black and painting everything black. Darkened it out, and then all of a sudden they got lights going all over the place. Are we at the circus? I just watched a church service the other day that right when they started, like they start their church service and they start singing their hymn, and immediately all of a sudden these blue lights start swirling around. Like they're crossing people's faces, and these blue lights running around. I said, Did I, Am I at the carnival? <laughs> Is the, is, is the clown coming out in just a minute? Let me answer that for you. Yes. <laughs> Spurgeon said it a long time ago. Brother Mike Hyde, Spurgeon said a long time ago, we're going to come to a day where it won't be shepherds feeding sheep. It'll be clowns entertaining goats. I'm telling you, when you got to start adding all that in so that you can keep people and add people, mark this down. You add a bunch of wolves. It's wolf mentality. This ain't even my whole message. This is just, I done got hung up here too. But Brother John Glenn, I looked up. I was, because of this, Paul said it wasn't just wolves. It was grievous wolves. And they'd get in the church and all that. And so, Brother Jason Fleming, I, I just did a casual search on Google. How to ward off wolves. 
Sound to me like what we've been doing around here for a while. I'm serious. They said this this isn't how you ward off wolves. The first thing they said is this. First thing they said about wolves is don't ever let them get behind you. Wolves, they don't like to attack from direct on. They like to get behind you. They're, they're cowards, they say. If they can't run in a pack and they can't all be together, one of them won't do nothing. They, they, they're cowards. They got to all be, you know, together. Let's just have unity. We just all got to be together. We just all got to be together from the back. They say this. This is how you ward them off. For number one, this is the first thing they said. Stay away from them. <laughs> Brother Roger, that sounds good to me. Don't, eat, don't go places where the wolves going to get you. Stay out of the wolf domain. That sounds like a good idea. But they say if you get wolves around here, I'm just reading you exactly what they told you to survive. Here, if you don't get nothing spiritual out of this, remember this, if you ever get attacked by literal wolves. All right? Some of y'all wind up in Alaska somewhere. There you go. They said be loud. Be real, be real loud. Said if you'll, they said if, if you'll get real loud and you'll make a lot of noise, wave your arm and make a lot of noise at them. Said they'll, it, they, it'll scare them. There's something about that confrontational, loud preaching that bothers wolves. You say, why y'all preach like that? Why it bothers wolves. Them wolves. <laughs> they, don't, they don't like that direct, authoritative. Bothers them wolves. Have you no, listen, I ain't just preaching, I'm telling you the book. Have you noticed that this is what the book said? I ain't telling you this is what the book said. It said, This know also in the last days them perilous times will come. And the chapter after that, 2 Timothy chapter 4, said they shall heap to themselves, not preachers. That preaching is what we're doing tonight, Brother yeah. Trevor. Not preaching. Yeah. They heat to themselves. Preaching. Teachers. Yeah. Having itching ears. Yeah. Let me just make everybody just real smooth and slick. And I want to just tickle your ears and then come over here and tickle your ears and tickle your ears and tickle your ears. And I'll leave your ears alone. <laughs> Some of y'all got weird shaped ears. I'm going to tell you all that right now. Y'all... Didn't wash behind y'all here, President. <laughs> they won't, it's not preachers of the last days. It's teachers. Yeah, yeah. That loud, that just that, that authoritative. Yeah. Yeah. You know who they say runs most wolf packs? You can read this for yourself. It's the female that runs most of the wolf packs. Wow. You know who I you know how I found more often than not a lot of these churches I go yeah. preach in that don't like my kind of preaching? Yeah. It's them women don't like it. Yeah. I just, I just got now when I'm preaching at some of these churches and some of these women start looking at me like a train wreck, like they're just in utter disgust. I just look back at them and go, ha, 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 ha. you going to look at me and intimidate me, honey. I don't know where you think I come from, praise God. <laughs> Lost your mind. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. We got preachers in pulpit just scared to death of what some woman's going to say or do. Y'all lost your ever-loving mind. They said this. They said light scares them. Too much light. Don't, don't get enough book. That book bothers them. That light will scare them. They said this. They said if you got a wolf problem, I'm reading you Google. So y'all can go out of here and say my pastor got his sermon off Google. I didn't. I'm just talking about this part I did read on Google. They said this. If you want to protect against wolves, Brother Udi, use fencing. Listen to me. Put up boundaries. Listen to me. Wolves hate boundaries, they said. Wolves don't like to be fenced. They won't get around. They hate boundaries. You can always spot wolf preachers, wolf people. They don't like no boundaries. Don't put no boundary on how I can dress and then get in the choir. Don't put no boundary on how I can live and then teach Sunday school. Don't put no boundary uh, on me how how what I can what I can post on social media and then be on the planet. Don't put no boundaries on me. I, hey, there already got to be some boundaries somewhere. 
Why should we take heed? You say, what's all this about? I'm talking about all this stuff we've heard. Brother Dixon preached last week. Nehemiah on night one about that word of God, about having that unity of the brethren. Right? About that night number two, about naming, getting things clean and right with God. What did he preach on night three? I done let it slip. Somebody help me. Y'all done let it slip too. Whatever he preached on. Oh, Hannah. First Samuel chapter three. See, we done let it slip. We done, it done gone. <laughs> I'm talking about what we've heard preached, what we've heard, what does that do for us? If we'll keep it together, it'll keep wolves out of our life. It'll keep us from getting deceived by some wolf. I'm done. I just throw these out and we'll leave. I just throw these out and we'll leave. Take heed to yourselves. Why? Because of the wolves. Take heed to yourselves. Why? Because of the warnings. Look at your text. Watch verse number 31. Verse 31. Therefore, verse 31, Acts 20. Watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. He uses two words there that you don't need to miss. He's talking about warnings. He uses the word watch and warn. Verse 31, therefore watch. Then he said, verse 31, I cease not to warn. You know where he got that from? Brother Bodford, he got that from Ezekiel 33. And in Ezekiel 33, the Lord told Ezekiel, he said, Have not I set thee as a watch men? over the house of Israel. And he says this in Ezekiel 33. He said, I've set thee to warn them. But don't miss this. Listen to me. I'm talking about we should take heed because of the warnings. Not because of the warning of what I say. He said, thou shalt warn them from me. Ezekiel 33, 7. In other words, he said, that warning you're doing to them people, it's not you doing it. It's me warning them through you. I don't know about y'all, I, I, was, I was raised in a day where we were taught that when a preacher started preaching that book and started preaching the Word of God, we was to listen because God was going to speak to us. The man, the man is certainly not God. We understand he's flesh and bones and flesh and blood. But we believe, according to that scripture, that when a man of God, called of God, starts preaching the Word of God, that the Holy Ghost of God starts speaking through him. Do we believe that or not? Y'all, if listen to me, please do me a favor. Please do me a favor. If you don't believe that tonight, then stop coming. Because I'm wasting your time. This is a stupid exercise, Brother Dan, if I'm just up here blowing air. This is dumb. But I'm not just standing up here blowing air. I'm standing up here telling you something from the Lord. We're to receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save our soul. And Paul said, when you heard the word which came from me, you received it not as it was the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God which effectually worketh in you that believe. Or to come to the house of God saying, Lord, when that man preaches or when some man preaches and he's preaching that Bible, Lord, I'm listening for you to talk to me. I need to answer my life. I need encouragement in my life. I need a rebuke in my life. I need a help in my life. God, speak to me. Why should we take heed to this stuff? Because God is warning us. Not just the preacher's God. Why do we take heed to ourselves? Because of the warnings. Because of the wolves. Lastly, because of God's working in our life. God's working and God's washing. Watch, watch your text. I love verse 28. This is it. This is it. We're going to close right here. Verse 28, Acts 20. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Here you go. To feed the church of God, which he, talking about God's working, God's washing, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now y'all listen to me. I'm not going to try and give you an English lesson tonight because <laughs> you've heard me preach enough to know I'm not an English major. <laughs> but I got this much sense that when somebody's talking about something and you don't really know who or what they're talking about, you find what they call the antecedent. In other words, you back up to find out who this is they're talking about. And in the text, it said that someone purchased the church with his own blood. If I want to find out who that is, I just start backing up. And when I back up, the only two people that I find in verse 28 is God and the Holy Ghost. 
Take your pick. Either one of them works real good. <laughs> According to this text, we should take heed to what God has put in our life. We should bring it home. We should tie it up, not just cause the wolves in this world, not just cause the warnings we have heard, but because God has put a lot of work in us. You say, what kind of work did God put in us? He put his own blood on us. Y'all, contrary, Brother Tyler, contrary to popular apostate liberal belief, I believe the blood that was shed on Calvary was God's blood. It wasn't just a man's blood. It was God's blood. Y'all, y'all, we're living in a day where there are literally liberal preachers that are saying things like this, that when the blood of Jesus ran down the cross, Brother Hunter, and fell on the ground, they literally say that it simply soaked in the ground, that the crows and the buzzards came and licked it up, and that's just all there was to it. That ain't so tonight. If that's so tonight, I'm lost and in my sins and going to hell. According to that text, and a According to Hebrews, that was holy blood. That was supernatural blood. That was God's blood. Listen to me, y'all. Just, just like the flesh of Jesus did not corrupt in the ground for three days, his blood did not corrupt either. And when he shed his blood, that blood was gathered by God. He presented it on the mercy seat of heaven. He sprinkled it on the throne and it intercedes for me. And the night that I got saved, it washed me, it cleaned me, it forgave me and made me justified in the sight of God. I should tie these things up. I should take heed to these things. I should bring these things to my heart. Why? Because God bought me with his own blood. <laughs> honest to goodness, honest to goodness, what more, Brother Doug, could it take for us to want to take heed to these things than to recognize and realize, Brother David Hyde, that God bought me with his blood. And so when God looks at me and the things out of that book that are taught, preached, and that we read daily in our Bible reading, when we see these things and when we believe these things, and God tells us, take heed to that. Y'all, I don't know how many take heeds that I told you about tonight. There was seven of them that I gave you uh, about stumbling, strife, service, standing, slipping, straying scriptures. I gave you about nine or ten more that Jesus said. It's like 20 different take heeds that we talked about tonight. And if you walk out of here with a blase attitude of, so what? Y'all, he bought you with his blood. And I'm not my own anymore. Brother Randall, I'm bought with a price. And because of that, not just because the wolves trying to mess you up, not just because the warnings you've received, but my goodness, look what he paid for you. And if he paid that much for me, I ought to take heed. The best of my ability. Tie these things off in my heart. Bring it home to me and wrap it at the dock of my heart and not let it slip and get away from me. God, help us tonight not just hear preaching, but heed preaching. Not just let it slip and be flippant with it, but get a hold of it tonight. Maybe tonight you sit here and you say, Preacher, I've let some things slip in my life. There's some things that I had tied off real tight at one time, and they've slipped a little bit. Preacher, there's some things in my life that I used to grab the warning, and then I'd hear it, and now I've just, there's some, I, we all live there, constantly having to retie off. Why don't we hit an altar tonight and say, Lord, help me, Esther. Is she in here? Oh, there she is. Zach ain't hearing you backslid. Praise God. Doesn't slip. Talking about tying these things off tonight. Take heed of them. Take heed to yourselves. The Lord's not going to do that for you. This is what we must do. Let's take heed to ourselves. Let's all stand tonight, Father. I, I would be an absolute hypocrite to stand up here and act like I've never let these solemn, holy truths slip in my heart. 
that I've never let the ink of God's writing on my heart fade, that I've never let the tying of God's commandments on my heart get loose. Oh, I have. But God, I thank you for the Holy Ghost because that sweet Holy Ghost of God is what convicts me and deals with me every time that things start getting loose. He, he gently or ever how he has to reprove me and reminds me, hey Zorn, tighten that up. Hey Zorn, bring that home to you. Tighten that up. Thank you for the Holy Ghost of God that speaks to our heart. Help us tonight to heed these things. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you need to come tonight, you come.